My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a cardiologist in New York. Today's video is on the subject of ectopic heartbeats. Now, these ectopic heartbeats are extra beats which disrupt the normal rhythm of the heart, and they can be felt by some patients as missed beats or flutters or skip beats or even sudden thuds. Let me demonstrate how these are felt. Uh, your heart beats like this, and then it'll stop and then you get a big thud and then everything comes back to normal. So the general feeling for patients is my heart's beating normally and then it stops and then boom, a big thud and then everything normalizes. So it, the, the sensation is of a missed beat followed by a big thud and then a restoration of normal heart rhythm. Whilst these are not dangerous, they can be very uncomfortable and they can be super unsettling for the patient. And they can obviously raise concern within the patient's mind as to whether they signify an underlying heart problem. Most patients will then go to their doctor and the doctor will run some tests such as an ECG, a halter monitor and an echocardiogram. And if these are normal or just confirm these ectopic heartbeats, then the doctor will call the patient, tell them that the tests are normal and that there's nothing life-threatening waiting to happen and discharge the patient. Despite this uh, often hurried reassurance, many patients continue to struggle with their symptoms. As these extra beats are felt as missed beats or even a sensation of the heart stopping transiently, uh, many patients worry that the frequent occurrence of these extra beats could cause ongoing damage to the heart. This uncertainty then leads to a lot of stress and anxiety, which in turn leads to more ectopic heartbeats happening. Today, I wanted to do a video to hopefully reassure patients why ectopic beats definitely do not cause damage to the heart. Now, the heart is a pump and its role is to get oxygen rich blood to our vital organs. To function most effectively as a pump, the heart has to beat at a certain rate and uh, in a regular rhythm. Uh, if the heart goes too slow or goes too fast, then the heart becomes less efficient and less effective. If the heart beats irregularly, then the heart becomes less efficient and less effective. It is therefore reasonable to say that any heart rhythm disturbance will make the heart beat less effectively, but only for the duration of that heart rhythm disturbance. So when we get an extra beat, what is happening is this, okay? So what you're doing is your heart is beating and then it relaxes, one, two, three, four, and then it beats, one, two, three, four, and then it beats, okay? Now, when you get an extra beat, what is happening is the heart is just contracted and then it starts relaxing one and then you get an extra beat. Now, very little blood will pump out because the heart didn't really get any time to fill with blood. And so that feels like a missed beat. And then the next beat that comes in, comes in a bit later. So it'll compensate for this, uh, this uh, extra beat. So what will happen then is the next beat. So you get this, um, let me do it again. Um, the heart is contracted one, two, three, four, contracted, one, two, three, four, contracted, one, extra beat, nothing, and then the heart will relax, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then you get the thud and everything normalizes. This is how, uh, this is what is actually happening. That's why these extra beats have felt like missed beats, okay? Now, as you can see, it is not that there is no blood coming out during the extra beat. It is just that there is less blood coming out of the heart at that time. But the next beat that comes along comes along a little later, the heart has had more time to fill with blood and more blood is pumped out. And this is why it is felt as a thud. And this next beat more than compensates for the, the, the beat that was an ineffective beat. And it essentially terminates that very transient period of inefficiency, okay? So for damage to occur, there has to be a sustained lack of blood going around the body. 
which would then mean that the cells would eventually suffocate and they would die because they're not getting as much oxygen as they need. But that has to be sustained, right? Ectopic heartbeats, by definition, are non-sustained. The period of inefficiency is so incredibly transient that there is that it is simply not enough for there to be uh, there's not enough time for there to be harm, right? The minute you get the thud, you know that period of inefficiency is over. Let me demonstrate this by using an analogy. Now, imagine someone compressing my neck. So someone, you know, I put my hand on my neck and sure, it feels uncomfortable, but it is not dangerous unless I compress my neck for a prolonged period of time, unless I apply sustained pressure. If I compress my neck for a second and then take my hand away, well, I can now breathe. So I can do that all day long, provided the period of pressure is not sustained over a certain number of uh, period, I'm not going to suffocate. And this is the same thing with ectopic beats. Yes, they feel uncomfortable for that second, but that second is simply not long enough for there to be any damage. You know, we can hold our breath, we can, we can go without blood going around our body for several, several seconds. So just because something is not pumping out and it's not even that it's not pumping out any blood it's pumping out a little bit less blood because it's only pumping out a little bit less blood but only for a second or less than a second there is no way that that tiny period of inefficiency is going to cause any damage to the heart damage to the heart occurs because of prolonged sustained periods of inefficiency so i hope this reassures you that ectopic beats do not damage the heart. Just because they're uncomfortable does not mean that they're harming you in any way. And often this reassurance in itself can make symptoms better for patients. Thank you so much for your time. All the best.